Hey guys, finally here talking about the 8x2 test. You remember we posted a call out for question and answer some weeks ago and we finally got all the data in. Just to give you a heads up, we've analyzed the data of about 1,100 riders who've undertaken the 8x2 test. That's actually only about a month's worth of data because so many, so many riders are undertaking the 8x2 test, particularly on Trainer Road, but a few are doing it on other platforms too. Not many on Zwift, it's fair to say, although, as you probably know, we've recently posted the conversion of the 8x2 test from Trainer Road to Zwift, and it's in the description below. But really what we're here to do today is to bust the myths about the 8x2 test. Now I'm a bit nervous about this because last time when we busted the myths of the 20 minute FTP test we got a lot of hate mail and unpleasant comments in the comments below but I'm sure you guys will take this on board professionally and with due grace on this occasion. So without further ado here are the myths busted regarding the 8x2 test. Now the 8x2 test is first of all said to be less arduous than other tests but it turns out that if you measure the 8x2 test difficulty and you can do that easily by looking at the training stress score the training stress score of undergoing that 8x2 test the 8x2 test as per protocol is actually more difficult than a classical 20 minute FTP test the 20 minute FTP test is uh, getting you around about 50 training stress score points 100, by the way, is the amount of stress you'd have on your body if you completed a 60-minute workout at your FTP pace. So a per protocol 20-minute test is getting you around 50 training stress score points, but it turns out that the 8x2 test, if you do it as per protocol, which takes an hour, by the way, takes a complete hour, which is a very long time, to complete that 8x2 test, is going to get you 57 training stress score points. So 57, as opposed to 50, is a higher training load on your body. Perhaps a better way to look at this, and this takes us into myth two, is that you will find it easier to complete it, meaning the number of people that actually manage to do the protocol is higher for the 8x2 test than the 20 minute FTP test. And after all, that's why a lot of people are doing the 8x2 test. But it turns out that of those 1,100 riders or so, 1,181 actually, in our database who attempted the 8x2 test, 5% failed to do the first interval, interval one of the 8x2 test. Five additional percent, so 10% overall, failed to do interval one or two. So five, a 5% five additional failed on interval two. And 20% altogether either didn't, didn't complete it or they didn't make a substantially good effort, i.e. their heart rate was very low on interval two or their power was very low on interval two. Effectively, they gave up and just rode through it. They might have completed it, but they didn't do it really with a fair effort. So by the way, when we're looking at this data in this data set today, our analysis today takes out all those outliers. It also takes out everyone not doing it on a power meter and it focuses on the core solid data. About 350 or so riders with core solid data outliers removed. So the next myth we're going to bust is that you've got to use either your best effort or perhaps some people say your most recent effort or the average of the two. The truth is it doesn't matter. And again, we've looked at this in this whole database. And the reason it doesn't matter, guys, is because if you look at the rider's average power in interval one, it's around about 265 watts on average. Obviously, there's a big variation. The average power for interval two is, can you have a guess? It's actually only slightly down. It's around 263 watts. So there's only a tiny decrement in power for riders who make a really good effort. Actually, the heart rate, if you look at the heart rate tracing, goes up slightly from around about 165 to 167 beats per minute, I think it is, on average, showing that it is slightly harder to complete that second interval. But the power is only slightly down. So basically, when you're comparing mathematically interval one over the 60 minute best power, it doesn't really matter whether you use interval one power or interval two because the difference is so marginal. And the average of the two, 264. So basically, mathematically, statistically, it doesn't matter whether you use the first interval, the second interval, or the average of the two. Effectively, it's so close, it's so close to the same mathematical equation that the error rate is, is absolutely marginal in terms of the differences between those comparisons. 
But here we go, guys. Here's the myth that you really want to know. And this is myth four. Does the 90% rule apply? And the answer is no, it doesn't apply. It's way, way off what the truth is. In some of the percentage of that eight by two, which actually equates to the Rider 60 minute best power. And just for the record, we have collected not just the eight by two results, not just their 20 minute FTP test results, but their power curve analysis and their best power, not just the power on that ride, their best power throughout all their rides. So then from that, we've taken their 60 minute best power, which is common parlance for their gold standard FTP 60. By the way, if you don't agree that that's their FTP, if you don't agree it should be 60 minute line in the sand, that's fine. Make your own video on that. Make your own blog on that. But this video is comparing the eight by two with their mean maximal best for 60 minutes. And the answer is yes, it's not 90% guys. The actual percentage is 77.5. 77.5 of the average of two efforts of the eight by two test is mathematically the mean best estimate across all those rider scores that will get you their 60 minute power, not 90%. So uh, does it make a difference if you were to use their best interval? Well, the best interval is actually interval one, which you already heard me say, slightly better power. That would be 77.1%. So it doesn't, you know, not a big difference between 77.5 and 77.1. So let me give you a practical example. Let's say the rider rode uh, the eight by two at 267 watts. If you use the 90% rule, that predicts that their FTP 60, the best possible ride at 60 minutes would be 240 watts, right? But in fact, the average across the database is 206 watts. But does that mean no one is then getting 90% of their 8x2 in terms of their ability to hit the 60 minute best? Is no, is no one getting 90% uh, preservation of their 8x2? No, obviously some people are. But that statistic is so far off, it's in the, it's in the minority. In fact, we've analyzed this with a frequency curve to look at how many people hit 90%. You know, some people are able to get 95% of their 8x2 average in their 60 minute power, but that's very rare. But let's take the, uh, the rule, the Chris Carmichael rule, if you like, of 90%, which is, you know, propagated all over the internet, and you very rarely see any detractors from this. So let's take that 90% rule. So here's a question, how many of our riders out of our database of 1,200 riders are able to hang on to the eight by two power to a 90% degree by the time they get to 60 minutes? And the answer is, well, let's give it a bit of leeway. Let's say 5%, so 2.5% either side. So how many get 90%, 91, 92, 92.5, 89, 88, 87.5, 87.5 to 92.5. How many is it that fall pretty much within that 90% rule out of, let's normalize it, out of 100 riders doing the 8x2 test? How many would it be? 6%, guys, only 6%. So here's, here's another way of saying what I'm saying today in terms of this big rule busted. The rule is correct on 6% of occasions, but it's incorrect on 94% of occasions. That is a pretty big headline if you ask me. And by the way, Trainer Road guys, are you watching this? I'm sure you are. And it'd be nice if you made a comment on this in your podcast, which by the way is awesome. I'm not disrespecting Trainer Road here. Obviously they're taking that 10% rule from the Chris Carmichael original 2009 recommendation. And much of this data is from Trainer Road itself. Okay, so in order to address some criticisms of the fact that the 60 minute full FTP results essentially not entirely known because in the database, there isn't actually a large sample of those undergoing a rigorous FTP 60 test, i.e. a 60 minute best effort. Other than that, that's in the database, you know, by convenience, let's say. So there are some legitimate criticisms that we don't know the best effort that the rider could ever do over the course of all time. Of course, we can never know their future effort, but what we can do is we can kind of impute the 60 minute best time by the fact that we know the 20 minute time. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, 
we can cross correlate we can cross correlate the riders 8 minute ftp test with a sample with those same riders that have done the 20 minute ftp test in the same month let's say and we can further improve the sample by looking at the heart rate data it's here actually the heart rate data for each aspect of the test so in each interval of the 8 minute um, 8 by 2 effort and also in the 20 minute ftp effort we can make sure the heart rate's broadly the same either rider made broadly the same decent effort if they didn't make a good effort or they petered out or they gave up obviously we'll take those out as our outliers. So from that very large sample, 1191 or so approximately, we then can have a more rarefied sample of approximately 21 rides where riders did the 8x2 and the 20 minute test broadly in the same month. Now we can further refine this by selecting those that did uh, the ride with the power meter and we get approximately nine rides, approximately nine rides where they did the ride with the power meter. It's a filterable here and I'll put this mini spreadsheet down below for extraction. So if you just follow my logic here, um, you've got the 60 minute power, which is basically unknown, but let's put a hypothetical rider, two, three, four watts. And then you've got the multiplier, the difference between the 20 and the 60, which we previously worked out was around about 0.85, but some people would say 0.9, but certainly rarely 0.95, only the small minority get 0.95. Then from today's data, we've got the eight by two to 20 minute multiplier, which we've already seen is around about 0.87 or so. So let's call that 0.87 for now. So for a rider of 0.234, if the multiplier, first multiplier was 0.9, we get 20 minute FTP power of around 260. And in the second multiplier 0.87, we get an eight by two power of around 298.8 or 299. So what that would mean overall is that by those two multipliers, we would impute or discern a value of the eight by two over 60, which would be around 0.783, which you'll see is very close to our 0.775. Now clearly you can play around with the figures. It doesn't matter what you put in as the parent watts, for example, let's say, of a strong rider who ends up with 275. It doesn't matter about the raw figures. What matters is the two sub multipliers. So if it was 0.855 in here, which it seems to be around the mean value, and 0.87 here, then the 8 by 2 over 60 calculation will be actually 0.74, which does seem low. Now, I'm not saying this is a definitive answer because we may have some further data in the future about definitive FTP gold standard tests, maybe with normalized power. But for now, this is a very interesting second step verification of the fact that the 8 by 2 over 60 is not 0.09. Okay, returning to the myths, guys. Uh, I was asked this in the Q&A recently. Is the magnitude of the error bigger or, or smaller with the 8x2 test compared to the 20 minute FTP test, which are both effectively predictors of your long gold standard 60 minute best ride? So which one is most out, if you like? Well, it depends what metric you use, but basically they're both they're both faulty. They're both faulty. The 95% the rule for the 20 minute test is almost equally faulty as the 10% rule for the 8x2 test and I'll explain why. In the 8x2 test remember I said that the actual conversion was around 77.5 rather than 10% so if you put 22.5 over 10 you get a 2.5 fold error rate yeah it should it's said to be 10 but it's actually 22.5 so that's one way of looking at the error so for the equivalent statistic for the 20 minute FTP test is around 14.5 in reality the drop from the 20 minute test to the 60 minute test, but the purported headline is only 5%, so that would be 14.5 over five, which is roughly a threefold error rate. So they're broadly similar. So I would say both rules, both of these golden rules are equally faulty, if you like. Finally, myth five. The myth is that this, all this stuff is superfluous discussion. That, yeah, you know, it's only for data geeks. Nobody really has to get that obsessional about their, you know, about their metrics. Well, first of all, if you, if you don't want accurate metrics, that's fine. Why, why are you testing? If you're testing, you presumably want accurate metrics. You want it to be as accurate as possible. So I don't buy this argument that inaccuracy is fine. All of science, all of exercise physiology progresses on the basis that we want to be more and more accurate, more accurate models. And more, as time goes on, we get more information and we're able to create more and more sophisticated and more precise models. The model doesn't have to be horrendously complicated, but it should be as accurate and precise as possible. And the reason that's important, one of the reasons is because of training zones. So let, let's take a little example. Let's take a rider of 300 watts now, a strong rider who completes the eight by two at 300 watts. The 10% rule would say what? That their FTP is around 270, right? But if you look at their zone four, estimate then by you know the classic hunter allen and 
Andrew Coggan zone analysis, that would get you around 246 to 283 on zone four. But it turns out that because of the miscalculation, the 300 watt eight x two completer would actually have an FTP not of 270, but more realistically, according to this database of 233, which would mean those zones, 246 to 280, would not be zone four at all, but zone five. So what I'm saying there, guys, is this miscalculation of the 10% rule, and it's similar, by the way, for the 5% rule, but in this example, what the rider thinks they're riding at zone four would actually be zone five. Similarly for zone three would actually be zone four. So the zones are mismatched and it happens to be that the degree of magnitude of difference between the 10% rule and the actual reality, which is 22.5, is enough to shift your zone almost precisely. So riders riding with that 10% rule, if they use that for their zone and they haven't actually done a gold standard 60 minute test, which is very likely because the minority of riders have done a full 60 minute gold standard test. If they haven't done that, then they're probably riding completely one zone out, not just half a zone out of sync, but one entire zone out of sync. Right guys, that's enough on the eight x two test. I'm gonna post a longer video here with the science behind it and all the analysis from our spreadsheets if you wanna look into that. Because I think some of you are skeptics and a lot of you when I posted the busted 95% rule, didn't believe a word I was saying and I was inundated with negative comments from people who think they know what they're talking about but aren't prepared to look at the data. All I'm saying guys is keep an open mind, look at the data. We've done a lot of work here in Fast Fitness Tips to collect all that data, almost 1200 rides, roughly 350 rides with a power meter and I am considering putting all this data into the public domain. I'm considering that now because some people will not change their mindset no matter what data you give them. They would just believe what they read in a book or on the internet, you know, five and 10 years ago. Come on, wake up guys. Science is progressing. This video is about science progressing. If you don't believe me, fine. Do your own research on this topic. All right, I've preached on long enough about the eight by two test. Take care guys, and as always, have a good ride. Yo, do you know anyone who's actually doing an 8x2 FTP test or an FTP test in general? If so, send them a link to this video and see if they'll post a comment in the comment section below. That way we can get some good feedback on whether people agree or disagree with my scientific analysis. Thanks a lot, guys.